Welcome everybody to Lunatic Froggy. Today we have Lunatic Mom with Lady Talk Sunday. Mom, we have been missing you. We know you've been sick and dad's oh, been yeah. sick. And I'm sure he's been a bear since so how he also has been quitting smoking. That is part of it. How well, is he good morning, doing? everyone. Well, he actually, because first he tried to quit smoking, like completely quit smoking. You can't do that. You, and that's what I told him. I said, you know, by you smoking all these years, you cannot just quit smoking. It's not like, oh, yeah, I just drank this half a glass of water and I'm not doing it anymore. Right. That's not like that. So I told him, I said, I don't mind if you have a cigarette, but time yourself up. Like, you know, okay, I had a cigarette and now I'm going to wait till the last, last, like the last jitter in your body to have another one instead of just what brain tells you, oh, get another cigarette. No. Uh, what my dad did was for the first week he on Chantex, he, um, he took. And he would set a timer on his phone. And yeah. for the first day, it was one hour apart. Now, remind you, my dad smoked three packs of cigarettes a day all the way up until he was 55 years old. Oh, that's what he's he was at. Right. So he did an hour apart. Yeah. Then he moved it to two hours apart. Then he moved it to three hours apart. Then he moved it to four hours apart. And he always found something to keep his hands busy and right. his mind busy. because Which it, is, that's what it is. That's like, you know, it, you know, you're doing nothing, you're doing nothing. Oh, let me grab a cigarette. No. Exactly. So. And I know dad really don't smoke a lot when he's on camera. Oh, that's when he smokes the most. Is it? I'm telling you. Those days are when he smokes three packs a day. Oh, damn. Is that why he took a hiatus from us? No, no, no. He was really sick. He really... I, I was sick for like five days. Like, really, I couldn't eat nothing, do nothing. Right. But, and then slowly, kind of, because, like I said, I don't eat stuff like that. So, it kind of, I guess, my stomach healed a little bit quicker than... It is right, because, because you don't have a he, lot of the preservatives right. that so, everybody else does. Mm -hmm. So then, and he's hungry. So yeah, I understand he has to eat. So he's like, well, I really don't have a taste for it. I'm like, you have to eat because you're diabetic. You have to eat. Right. But you have to pick a food that it tolerates you. Like, you know, you can keep it because Be he would puke it out diet. and everything. Yeah. So it was kind of hell for him all over a week. Like, it was like that. Well, and with him having emphysema. Yeah, it's like, that's why I told him. I said, well, don't think about it that it's like all one thing. Because now you're trying to quit smoking. Your body shock that it's like you're trying to take something away. Now it's all of the other senses woke up. And now what are you going to do? So I tried to keep him on track and everything else because especially to stay hydrated because he was really dehydrated after like he was puking and all that. And I told him, I said, you cannot be doing that. You need to drink at least one Gatorade or Powerade or whatever. Right. And some then if you want water. some soda. Yeah. So because these, they give you the electrolytes to keep you hydrated a little bit longer than just water. My because heart sometimes doctor told me, um, He'd rather be on a vape than smoke a cigarette. Well, he tried the vape, but then his lungs, like, he really couldn't breathe. Right. I don't know what, what happened because some people, like, you know. Popcorn I lungs. Guess, yeah, that's what but happened. But with emphysema, that was that's the start what... of the emphysema. Is yeah, that he didn't know what Roy was can't, it. Roy can't do it. Roy can't yeah. vape at all. Like, literally. The second he starts vaping, he's just like, <clears throat> yeah, that's how he like, was couldn't breathe. And I'm like, what the hell's happening? I don't know. I'm trying to quit smoking and I'm doing this. And then I can't breathe because I feel like I'm drowning. So like water was settling in his lungs. Yep. And that's because so I can vapor. do it. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I told him, I said, no, you cannot do that. They have so drive ones. Better now. They have drive ones. 
Yeah, but he's like, I give up on these vapes because they cost money. Because like, if yeah. this one doesn't work, you have to buy that one, and then you have to buy the cartridges. So it's always vicious circle. Right. No, they so, have the dry ones that the doctor prescribes for you. It still has the nicotine. Mm -hmm. And then you just well, he slowly... he asked the doctor like what, and then he was on this Chantec, but this Chantec it was really bad, like his it mind, is. everything. It's horrible. Oh my god. So he said, no, I'm not going crazy. I'm not doing none of, the, none of that. I'm like, I'm going to try to slowly wean myself off and see what happens. So he actually is doing pretty good because, like, I give him a pack of cigarettes when he goes to work, which is at 1 in the morning. Right. And then he still comes back home with cigarettes, which he used to. He would call me, hey, got, you my, got my cigarettes because I'm coming home. And then he, by the time he would go sleep, he would already smoke the second pack. Right. So now he's sticking out with this one that it's one and still have left over. And then I'll buy him a pack when he goes to work. So it's like one a day, barely. Like, you know, like it's a little bit less than one right. pack. Which is actually really fucking good. Yeah, it is really good for him to just start it recently and to get to this point. And I told him, I said, you just keep it in your mind that the longer you stay, that you're not going to grab a cigarette. That's how easier it's going to get. Right. And so. um, see, Roy used to smoke like one and a half packs a day. And I was the one that smoked half a pack a day. <laughs> yeah. So, he would smoke my other half a pack just so that way we only had to buy two packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah. And it's like, ugh. But, yeah, last week was horrible because I know I don't know about Chicago, but I know Texas, uh, Iowa, and Minnesota all had tornadoes. Texas they and did. Oklahoma. We had we had some in Illinois, but it was more south of us right. that it didn't get. We just got the storm, but it wasn't even like really bad because it kind of pushed it off all the way like a northwest. Right. So it kind of missed us just the end of it a little bit. Like it was a high winds and hail and that, you know, so it wasn't so bad. But the south of us, a lot of people had their homes damaged. Like one subdivision, they said that they just built a nice subdivision. The whole thing was melt, like gone. Right. Uh, a whole entire town minus the grocery store got destroyed in Iowa. Yeah, I've seen that one. That was crazy. The that is day, really. Well, the the first it took the first one, it took like three fourths of the town, and then they had a whole another tornado come through and just finish off the town. Whatever, they, yeah, whatever was left it's over. It's like, oh, well, we have these people... little storms here today, but it's there is no wind, so it's just a thunder and rain. So I can deal with that, but I'm like scared of it. And my poor hair, oh, she's scared of the thunder, so she's sitting right here underneath the desk. <laughs> I don't sleep when there's um, thunder and lightning. I, it brings me back to childhood trauma. So mm. that's why I don't do it. But um, no, the day that we had those storms and everybody else had those storms, was the day my uncle died. Oh, my goodness. Like, they pronounced him gone at 2.30. I got notified at 3.30. Um, and by 7.30, everybody was getting nailed with massive storms. I said, hell must have froze over or something because... My uncle dies, and all of a sudden, everybody's just getting tornadoes and stuff. Yeah. But, again, and I know you seen my post, and I know Dad seen my post um, on Facebook, but not a lot of people know that I was also suffering with a sort of a depression because I realized how much nobody really cared about my uncle and my uncle had a mental disorder. And everybody right. was like, oh, he's such an evil man. He's such an evil man. He's such no. an evil man. He's crazy. He's insane. Nah. And I didn't really pay attention to the disorders because 
it didn't affect my life at that point in time. But now I sit here and think about it. My son has the same exact illness that he had. And I would hate for my son to be. Well, people are very cruel and very selfish because soon as it doesn't fit their well, like willing and participating and what they like and don't like, then you're not good anymore. They automatically right. throw you away. Instead of to look at it and say, you know, I don't know what's going on in this person's life. Maybe if I can make this person's least one minute happy that I can accept it, who he is or she, then it would make their life better because they would feel that they are accepted to the, exactly. you know, everybody. Because that's how I always, I always told my children, I said, don't ever look at it that somebody talks different, somebody does things different, somebody looks different. Don't ever judge them by that because they cannot help it what happened to them but if you can accept them for what they are who they are that's how you're going to make their life a little bit easier because they're going to be feeling part of somebody something exactly and i i I, if you ever look at my comment section i see a lot of comments about like oh kyle has anger issues he needs to resolve that he needs to get his life yeah over. dad has mm-hmm. anger issues it's like mm-hmm. you do realize dad has a medical disorder a mental disorder it's called bipolar is, right and that's why that's why like i said sometimes i don't even because sometimes it affects kyle a certain way right when I've he sees comments that. like that because he's like everyone hates me everyone hates me but it's like they don't understand that trigger in your mind. Exactly. And I will straight up tell you, Kyle, if anybody wants to pick on you, they can come through me because at the end of the day, you are an amazing kid. Yeah, you've done stupid shit. Which but is what, what kid ever, hasn't? Or anybody. If you're going to, I always tell Kyle, I said, think about it. Tell someone if, if you feel kind of down when they talk to you about it, tell someone don't throw stones when you live in a glass house exactly because your house gonna get destroyed Uh, everyone has something everyone some people may hide better like able control of it better that they don't show it but some people not able to control it because the impulse like that's an impulse exactly And that's a big thing with bipolar disorder Mm -hmm. is an impulse control. Unfortunately, both lunatic dad and Kyle, their impulse is to rage, which again goes in with bipolar because part of bipolar is destructive behavior disorder. Right. And Kyle was diagnosed with ADHD, which is the hyper, the high level right. because some people are ADD which is lower manner right that's just a the, like a distraction but he was diagnosed with hyper so it is like when he gets then especially in the nerves nobody knows that nerves is your engine in your body well exactly if you want to think about it that way uh in order to breathe you gotta have nerves well guess what multiple sclerosis and fibromyalgia effect Yes, and that's why why do they say when people get MS that slowly, eventually, all the nerves going to shut down and people die. Right, and my mom because has multiple sclerosis. That's what it is, nerves. It shuts and the brain down. The everything, because brain has to get signals to be able to function, to distribute everything where it has to go. And if your impulse and everything else and your nerves, especially when you get upset, anybody get upset, automatically you feel yourself up like that yep but if you have any other disorder on top of it then it's twice as worse exactly and you cannot just shut it off like oh yeah this is a lamp i'm gonna turn it off no right here's here here's how i like to picture it okay because my family has a lot of medical issues or mental issues and physical issues If you take a normal person, somebody who doesn't suffer from ADHD, ODD, um, 
destructive behavior disorder or sensory disorder. anything along those lines, sensory disorders or anything like that. Mm -hmm. A normal human being, sh when they shut a light off, it's easy, click it. Now, you take somebody with a disability and tell them to shut it off. It is literally calculating in their brain, okay, here's the switch. But that as they're clicking that switch, it's not working. So they're trying to figure it out. They unplug it's, it. <clears throat> it's still not working. It's I feel still like bright. anybody else, they say, oh, I can switch off on and off. Okay, good for you. <laughs> but in people like that, I feel that if they're trying to switch off, how many things goes in their body, in their nerve system, that they might switch off one behavior that, okay, I shouldn't be doing that. But the other 50 or 100 are still running around. Right, exactly. So he has to shut off one at a time, which is it needs time to get it down. That's why people with sensory disorders or anything like that, going to sleep is not just, oh, I'm, no. no, going to sleep is, Okay, I'm not comfortable in this position. Maybe I should try yeah, this position. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. I should try this position. Everything. Maybe if Everything. I get my dogs up here. Maybe if I read. Maybe if I go take a hot bath. Maybe if yeah. I do this. Maybe I need lavender. Maybe I should try this medication. Mm -hmm. And your brain just does not go and go and go and go and yes, yes. There's so and many why... times I lay in bed and my mind's constantly running while sometimes it's not pretty things that run through my mind and tears are running down my eyes. Right, because like, then you get the sad. Why the fuck am I everything. thinking about this? Yes, because <laughs> everything, that's what I said, because if you turn off one thing, okay, I'm okay with it, I come to peace with it, and I settle this down, so then it's already on a level, lower level. Right. But this thing is still right there, and it's like, Running, 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 running. How am I going to do that? So then everything else coming to that point. Okay, what about if I did this? And maybe these people this. Or maybe this, that. Maybe this, this. So it's just one of those things that it's like hard, really hard to settle down. Exactly. Because like even for example, like in my case, like when my nerves get overwhelmed, and since I had the brain surgery, so it's like my right side, it's kind of shuts down. Right. Like I can move my arm or I can even like I limp on my leg, you know, because it's like it's like everything. Because when they said when the, my nerves are overactive, then they expand and they pressing on everything. So now it's like paralyzing it. Yep. And then I'm like, OK, so now so then I have to tell everybody let me let me just sit here for a minute let me let me sit here so all this come down five minutes because you i can yeah go in. how do you deal with that and lunatic, lunatic dad and kyle well they i feel kind of bad because when i didn't know that i had a brain tumor and this was happening to me but because i would like faint but i was conscious but i would right. just completely fell basically your body your your my mind, nerves my like, body okay, my my mind was lot. open but body was not right so for that reason that was like really really hard and the kids were younger at that time so they were like oh it's our fault my mom's sick it's our fault mom's sick we cannot do that we cannot do this so then i tried to tell them, no 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 none of your fault none of it none of it happened i don't know what's going on so we have to go one step at a time to find out what's going on. And I didn't even had a time to even make an appointment to go see a doctor to explain what was going on. Because I came home from work and it was Saturday. I was like, I wanted to, I wanted to clean up the house and I was washing the floor. And like my right side completely like got numb that I couldn't move. So I'm like, let me sit down. And when I sat down and I got up, both of my legs gave in because... I was already so much overwhelmed with the yeah. nerves that I completely collapsed. And they all, like, the kids were start screaming because they were little. Kyle was two years old. Yeah, they were little. Yeah, they were little. They all were little. And then my husband's like, 
we have to take her to the hospital. We have to. And I was like, no, no, don't, don't take me to the hospital. They're not going to do nothing because I don't know what happened. You know, like I just right. cannot move. And I hate to go to the hospital because they just generally treat you. They don't go and look into specifics. Right. So I hate it because then you sit there six hours, seven hours before they're going to tell you, oh, you have to follow up with your doctor. I already knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you nothing you. <laughs> so about that time when they took me to the hospital and they said what happened that I got up and collapsed and I couldn't get up because like I couldn't feel my right arm, right leg. And like uh, my eye, apparently like my eye was shot. Like, you know, I couldn't Through open it in my eye. Yeah. So I didn't know how I would look. So they didn't know if it was a stroke or what was it. So that's what they treated me like that. So then they automatically took me in and did the MRI. When they did the MRI in the hospital, then the doctor comes in. Oh, how long have you had this tumor on your head? Oh, what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, um, today's the first day that I heard about <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> like... So that's why that's that's how I found out and everything else. So then after that, I stayed in the hospital for a couple of days because they did the spinal tap and all that because they were expecting like maybe multiple sclerosis that it's happening right. and everything else. So they had to do all that. And that was so painful. The spinal tap oh, is extreme. I had a spinal tap at like 10 years old and I swore to God or 10 days old. And no, because it's says, always that thing feels like that. Right. right. There. My mom says that was one of the hardest things she ever had to, to watch, watch was watching yes. a 10, mm -hmm. 10 day old baby have a spinal tap. Spinal tap. Yeah. And come to find out I had uh, spinal meningitis. Oh, yeah, see, but they're good that they did it. So, yeah, that's how I found out. So then after that, the kids all, like, when they found out that I have a brain tumor, they were scared to talk to me. They were scared to say anything. They were scared to do anything. And I felt so bad. I really felt so bad. And I, I wish that I would have not told them all because they were young. The older kids kind of a little bit understood because I told them, I said, nothing that you've done. So they kind of understood right. that it happened. But the younger kids were like, oh, we were mean. We were bad. We were running around. We did this. And mom's sick. So they were really, really scared. And I felt so bad. At least and after, they kind of, like, I mean. They kind of get to the point that my husband told them that, like, kind of tried to explain to them on their level that. Right when they do stuff and i get upset that's when i cannot move so if they would be able to kind of keep like conscious of it not to do stuff so they still can be kids they still can be played but not too overwhelming then then they kind of understood so if they kind of that was kind of like nice and kind of funny that they kind of kept each other on their toes because like soon as the younger kids like kyle lauren matt steven they were young, so they kind of started, you know, playing around, running around, yelling, screaming, push one another. So then I was always scared about Kaya because he was only two years old. So when they pushed him, I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> one time they threw him down the stairs. <laughs> Poor Kyle. Oh, yeah. No, because that like baby's been beat up on since he was oh, little. Oh, since he was little. So, yeah. And then, you know, it didn't help that I work seven days a week, sometimes 16 hours a day because I what I worked, like whoever didn't show up, then I had to pick up the shift. And I was taking the kids to work with me. So, again, you stress with watching the kids so they don't get hurt. And then you do in your work. Job yes. Yeah, so, like and then the other kids at home, they would call me, Mom, what do we do? Mom. So, I thought my oldest daughter, Natalia, and we call her Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I love it. I love Natalia, yeah. though. Yeah, can so can never spell it. Um, because Froggy sucks at spelling pronunciation. <laughs> um, life, yeah, no, but I taught her how to cook, like make simplest meals. And she would on the phone, and I would tell her, Do this, do that, make sure if you cannot reach the stove, you have to put a little stool and you have to stand there. And if you feel too hot, you leave it alone and wait till dad comes home, and then you tell him what you were trying to do. So she was very helpful. <laughs> we 
actually have been teaching my son how to cook because he's like, Mom, I want to go live on my own. I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it's like, Jordan, you're 16. Yeah, no, he's still got you're time. You're in the process. Right now, he's in... <sighs> the independency process he that he to wants to... Yeah. And right now, he's like, he's in a mild phase of his schizophrenia where, like, He's not really hearing voices. They're still there, but he's not hearing them. And, you know, he's not seeing things as much as normal. So he thinks he's fine. Right, right. He hasn't been on medication because at Texas is stupid. Oh, my gosh. So he's like, I'm fine. I have no medication. I'm good to go. I'm not. You know, yeah, no, sometimes, like you know. It's like Jordan, you're in what we like to call re-emission. Basically, right. you're, it's dormant right now. Like he's learning to deal with it, how to control right. it. Yeah, so he and still needs time. that's the major thing, but at the same point in time, I think we forget that he's schizophrenic. Right. Because there's times where it's like, Jordan, why are you so mad? Yeah. And it's like. A uh, duh, he's schizophrenic with yeah. destructive behavior disorder and aggressive behavior disorder on top of ADHD and autistic. Right. He's gonna be mad. Yeah, he's gonna get himself like that. And that's why, that's why, like I said, I learned a lot when I found out about the kids having ADHD and then sensory disorder and all that. And I feel like Kyle got the most help because when because Kyle and Lawrence, they are five years apart. So when Lawrence went to school and actually like I, I didn't know what to do and they then because he would not his sensory disorder was so overwhelming that he didn't want to wear clothes, he didn't want to wear shoes, nothing. Because it was everything was hurting him. Like yep. he was like, it hurts, it hurts. I don't want it. I don't want it. He was walking year round with shorts on. My son don't wear shorts, but he wears baggy pants. He don't like tight pants because of it. Right, because doesn't want to touch and it. Yeah. Nine chances out of ten, you are going to see him without a shirt on. Like yeah. if I have to tell him to put a shirt on, it's like fine. Yeah. It's like, it's it's because and I one time I asked Lawrence like when he was little because the kids were kind of mean to him at home, but in a way I guess I understand that they were trying to teach him to control it and how right. to be prepared for it because they would stand like like that far away from him, but it was just pointing like that that they they like pointing to his arm or something. I'm not and he you. would yeah and he would scream that hurts that hurts because of his brain right. And I told him, I said, listen, look, see, this is touch. Like we had to teach him everything. This is touch. This is cold. This is hot. Because again, he would go and touch hot shit. Like, like he would get burned or whatever. And I'm not going to have DCFS on my hands. <laughs> right. They're paid to that. He was, he was four years old when he went outside and pick up a brick that I had around the landscaping. And he threw it up in the air and it landed on his head in the corner. And it went and completely bleeding his blood were dripping he didn't even know that he got hurt because that's how his sensory didn't feel like that right. that's was bad so i told him i said natalia brought him in and she's like mom 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 he's gonna die he's gonna die she's freaking out i'm like don't freak out don't because you're gonna freak him out and don't don't do that what happened she's like before i turn around he already had this brick and threw it in the air and i couldn't catch him so he got, and I'm like, okay, so let me get him to the bathroom, put him in a bathtub. And I told him, I said, I'm going to pour water on her because you have to tell them everything you do. Right. So I said, I'm going to pour water on your head because you got dirty because you threw your rock on. And, you know, like kind of trying to get him soaked. And then, but when I started pouring, because when he was little, I told him, if you see blood, and I showed him what blood was, you have to let me know because you are hurt. So that's what he coordinated. So then he started freaking out because he's seen blood going with water. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. No, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. I'm just washing it. I'm not going to. So 
that was really, really hard because I had to teach him everything. I told him how to wear socks. I said, this is socks. That's how it's going to feel. That's what it does. And everything else. And the you shoes. You know, I still don't wear socks. I cannot stand <laughs> nothing on my feet. Like, my mom always said I was the most impossible kid to put socks on my feet. And especially with fibromyalgia, I hate wearing socks i will wear brand new socks but the right. second i take them off of my feet i will never put them on my feet again yeah it's like he always like when he was little he told me i want these socks <laughs> and i'm like oh my gosh what did that mean <laughs> Because he wanted the soft, like, you know, like you have that little string around it that it right. rips the little thing. But they had one of them that they were like that wide and it didn't have that. It's just it was made that way that it kind of hold on. So it was soft. So it wasn't squishing him. So he's like, I want these socks. These socks. So Be I'm more like. more specific, please. Yeah. And I'm like, bring, okay, so uh, we're going to. Bring me socks so I know. So I can see which one is it. So then, again, he's like, I don't want that shirt. I don't want that shirt. That one hurts. That one hurts. So I'm like, Why, where does it hurt? Right here. Right here. So he didn't like anything to. Around so I had to do that. Yeah. My son hated tags. Like, he. Well, he hated clothes, but if you put a, a shirt on him and it had a tag, we had yeah. to go through and like cut well, no, off I... all the tags. And my dad's like, "Oh no, we're not dealing with this. Come on, no. Jordan." He took my son. He took him shopping. He got. He's like, "You pick out the clothes you want, but they can't have tags." His my son looks at him. He goes, "See." And he showed him a shirt where there was no tags. And he goes, it was just no a stamp. Tags. Yeah. It's a stamp. And my son picked out like $600 worth of clothes. And my dad's like, he should be good for a year. Yeah. I bought him three of each size. It yeah. does not have tags. He should be good. I'm like, dad, yeah. why did you go spend that much money? He goes, I would rather spend that much money than listen to your kid freak out because there's a tag on his shirt. Yeah. Um, no, that's how I had to do it, too. That's how I had to. Because Stephen also, even though he wasn't diagnosed with sensory disorder, he was diagnosed with EG, but he didn't like the tag either. So I'm like, okay, let me get all of your little shitheads no tag <laughs> shirts. I'm not going to pick one at a time which one can tolerate and which one cannot. Right. And pants like and Matt, shorts, it's like... Matt would not like a lotion, like, you know, after shower to put right. lotion on his body. Oh, my gosh. He hated it. He would scream. I'm like, why? What's wrong? This is very nice. Look how it smells nice. It's like a lavender, so it keeps you calm. No, there's bugs crawling on me. He felt like it was bugs crawling on him when he put lotion. Till this day, he won't put no lotion on. And he's 30 years old. <laughs> like, I feel like they're... Okay, question. You have fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. I have fibromyalgia. Do you ever get the sensation like there's bugs crawling in your scalp? Mm -hmm. And you're yes. just sitting there scratching like, right it there. like, oh. Yeah. Like, right, like something's walking right, right here. And it's like, <laughs> there's nothing there. Yeah. So my doctor told me, like, if I feel like this, so just sit there and like tap it because the nerves kind of get the signal and it's going to like wave it off. Oh, <laughs> I've been scratching it because I'm like, yeah, because fucking like, bugs in my hair. And, yeah. Okay. So no. I was in foster care. And one of the main things that we all worried about was head lice. Right. So, still to this day, well, if you feel a bug crawling in your hair, it's head loss. It's, yeah. Now it's like I got fibromyalgia, out. and I feel that's, bugs crawling in my hair, and my brain yeah. automatically thinks head loss, which about, makes yeah. it itch, and it's like, oh my yeah, God. No. But try, like, you know, when you feel it, just like tap it. Tap it. Okay. Yeah. So, it's like, like, you know, sometimes I'm like, like playing piano, 
<laughs> <laughs> because then they, my doctor said that it's like you might not necessarily touch the right, you know, nerve underneath your skin. But if you do it with your fingers and like everywhere, then one of them is going to touch it, that it's going to wave it and it's going to push it away. Oh, fucking thank God. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly I, how effective it's going to be because, you know, sometimes it depends how hard, it, how bad right. it is, you know. But if you take like, a, you know, even a Tylenol, like a headache Tylenol or something. So that should like relieve the pressure. And then if you do that, that might help. Well, I take leave fucking constantly because I yeah, know that you can see it, but like this whole shoulder is just yeah, it's swollen. So, yeah, so that's why leave is good, and it also helps with the pain. Right, and uh, yeah. a lot of it's because for a long time I sat in this chair and I was doing everything well. In order to like get on my computer and do anything, I had to have the mouse and keyboard almost all the way to the end of the table, and I was still reaching up. Well, right so it's there, just like, like this, that yeah it hurts time. yeah then it hurts and i right had a work injury from that one because my dumb ass once again i'm accident prone like no tomorrow was pushing a pallet flipped over top of the pallet and landed on this shoulder and messed up my rotator cuff oh my goodness and their their idea of fixing it was giving me cortisone shots in my arm no, that only helps for a minute. Right. And the doctor's <laughs> like, well, we could give you shots in your knees and your shoulders and your ankles. No, you can I'm keep like, your shots. You can keep your shots. You can keep your pain meds. I'm going to go get some fucking gummies and pass the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because no. I know a lot of it's people really are hard. so against CBD. But let me tell you, CBD or Delta 7 works really great for fibromyalgia. Yeah. No, this is like really, really... Like, people don't understand how hard it is to live with any kind of a chronic pains or anything that it's not showing outside that people would understand what it is. Right. Because my daughter just got diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and her doctor's like, or her family's like, her boyfriend's family is like, Well, I don't understand why you're in pain. Yeah, I, I don't didn't understand do what yeah. you didn't do nothing. Why are you in pain? And she goes, Have you ever had all of your nerves just overstimulated? Just, yeah, like. Yeah, like, like last night before this storm was happening, my wrist right here, I couldn't even pick up a remote for the TV. Uh, I dropped it. Yeah, I dropped it. I couldn't. I'm like, what the hell? Well, and there's days she'll be walking up the stairs and all of a sudden she's down the stairs and it's like, mm -hmm. welcome to fibromyalgia. She's like, yeah. I forget what I have to do in the day. I'm like, welcome to fibromyalgia. She goes, yep. Mom, not everything's fibromyalgia. I go, you did not realize how much fibromyalgia. Nerves. That's all your nerves. your brain. Yeah, nerves. It, it affects everything in your daily life. Yep. It affects your brain. You forget things. Uh -huh. Now, my doctors are having a debate on whether I still have fibromyalgia or if I have multiple sclerosis and fibromyalgia because of two differences. My slurred speech and the fact that my hands and my feet are numb constantly. Now, as you know, and I've sent you pictures, Froggy broke her toe. Yeah. Trying to uh, trying to be funny. I'm like, oh, I can put both of my feet back and kick the bottom of my table. Oh. Um, That's not it's good. metal. Yeah. And, and everything is amplified when you hit or something right. because of the nerves. Then it's like. <laughs> like literally you could go back on the stream and you just see my face going. Yeah, because I just wanted to scream, but I was on stream, and I'm like, I'm not yeah. gonna scream. I'm not gonna scream. I'm not gonna <laughs> scream. I'm not gonna scream because it hurt. And then yeah, yesterday I was letting my dog go, and I was walking alongside my bed. No fucking reason why my foot should have got there, 
anywhere near the plastic piece at the bottom part of my bed. And all of a sudden, I skinned the toe right next to my broken toe. Oh, that's what I did the other day because I was like walking and I'm like, I thought I had it cleared and I'm just walking and on the leg of the bed end of it. And the bed, I'm like, whoop. I'm like, what a dumbass. So now I have to walk like this so I can measure <laughs> <laughs> that I have to be in the middle, not next to the bed. Right. And it's like I was clear, but at the same point in time, it's a depth perception issue, which a lot of people with multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, and any other disorder like that, you're not going to have the depth of perception that anybody else would have because in your mind, you're seeing things this far apart. In reality, they're either this far apart or they're this far apart. Yeah. Like when I'm driving, I have to have the, them be like, okay, you're in the clear because I don't think I'm in the clear. And they're like, you have three feet of space. How do you not think you're in the clear? Oh, no. I, I When I drive, I don't pass people. I don't merge in unless I have a big gap. <laughs> right. It's, and it's, I'm like, and nope. That's another thing. Like, I see all these people just zo zooming in and out of traffic. Uh -huh. and I'm like, I hate it. How? And I cannot stand that because that scares me because I'm like, I'm automatically, yeah, I understand that they might know that they see that they have enough clearance to go in front of me or something, but I'm freaking out. They're going to hit me. They're going to hit me. And I'm and like, I have a very bad panic attack. The perception that we have and everybody else has, yeah. it's closer. And it works really great if it's if you have the depth perception of it being closer, because now if you remember, we have I that eye exam when we go get our license you see all the dots even if they're way back here mm -hmm. like i could see my finger right here yeah that's why they measure my thing and it's always like you know you said there uh, which side this side this side and i'm like okay so it's it's just so crazy I, and i don't know i'm just scared and i told my husband i said what happens if i'm gonna go blind what are you people gonna do with my ass <laughs> it's I just scary I could see if you went blind, you would be the one. Okay, this is this this is how the house is laid out. Oh, I would still walk around. High. I know everything where it's exactly. At. And I do. It's just I would not be able is, to drive and go anywhere to do anything. Exactly. That's what that's what only would probably kill me because I everybody do everything. Everybody else would have to drive you, and you'd be like, "You're too close to that car." Yeah. Even though it could be like a mile it could apart be, yeah. because your mm -hmm. hearing's going to increase, your yeah. smell's going to increase. Yes. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, "That pasta's done. You should have had it out yeah. there by now." But I yeah. know a lot of people that have gone blind. Like, we're born blind, but have gone blind, and they still cook and everything because of the simple fact that that it it's um instead of using their sight senses, yeah, they use the other senses, and then like they have somebody could tell them the handles on this side or the handles on that yeah. side, and they remember where they put stuff. Yeah, even now, like when I go, like at night, when I try to get my water out of the water cooler, so even though it's not that dark, but it's like even the light, because right. sometimes the light, it kind of blinds me that I cannot see very well. So I put my finger in a glass from the top, and I put the water, and when it touches, and I'm like, okay, it's now overflowing. <laughs> I literally, I listen to it as it's pouring into my bottle. And then I'm yeah. like, okay, this is the perfect amount. Yeah. It, it's so weird it's just, how uh, we learn how to cope everything. with Everything. Yes, because you have to learn. And like even I went to see my doctor yesterday and then she's like, oh, so how are you doing and this and that. Well, I'm like, well, still doing whatever it is. I learned to live with. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm fucking she's alive. Like, that's how I'm doing. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's not good. That's not good. You know, because like they're trying to kind of help me with actually like, you know, the my stomach and everything else. And she's not for that. Right. She's for my thyroid. Right. Which actually does affect your 
it does affect the weight and stomach and everything. So, and she's trying to help me. And she's like, well, have you gone to a dietitian? Did any, you know, primary doctor send you? I said, yes, they did. And they asked me, what do I normally eat? Well, I eat what I learned that I can tolerate. So I told them what I eat. And they said, oh, you're doing perfectly fine. Instead of helping me, hey, maybe you try this food, it digests a little bit quicker, but you get more nutrition, or maybe you can try this. No. It's just well, like, that's does, wrong. And that's the thing is you got to, because of the way that your stomach digests things, mm -hmm. you have to uh, eat foods that are more easily digestible, yeah. like bananas. Mm -hmm. They're easily digestible. You can't have things like steak because that will literally no. fill you up for like six years. Yep. But now a salad. <laughs> a salad yeah, but is... sometimes I have to see I, even a, a salad if I eat, I have to actually shred it, cut it, shred it. Because if I eat normal leaves, they sit in my stomach. I cannot even do that. So I always do buy the bag of shredded. Stomach? acid to uh, apparently i do because i have a very bad heartburn <laughs> that has nothing to do with no i know but no they that. said that my i have a severe paralysis of my stomach which is the muscle in your stomach oh, like yeah. when the food hits so then it's supposed to do that it doesn't it does very little so it's like my food like normally if i would let's say eat a dinner like with potatoes or rice or whatever right. and meat and vegetables I'm good for three days. So how how do you fix that besides eat, drinking fucking water? <laughs> I was gonna say slim fast or protein shakes. Yeah, which is I tried because my doctor said, well, since you cannot eat food to get your nutrition, maybe you should drink these drinks. So I tried, but it affected my thyroid, which is I don't have a thyroid, but because I take the supplement, it affected that my levels were out of whack. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, you told me to substitute this so I get these nutrition because I don't eat well. And now she's like, no, we cannot do that. I'm like, okay, so now I don't eat. <laughs> so I told her, I said, I learned to eat what I can tolerate and what I know that it digests within a day. So basically your body is saying, fuck you. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much i hate With, to laugh because my no, is the same exact no, thing it, it's hard because you know like even my husband likes to go like you know for lunch or for breakfast or for dinner sometimes you know he likes to go and he's like we can enjoy ourselves we can go i'm like okay oh uh, you have to pick somewhere that they have a soup <laughs> i don't think you could have soup because for breakfast but toast. Uh, well I do. I usually eat toast only. And when we go for breakfast, it's like, why can't you eat anything else? You know, they have a lot of stuff. I'm like, well, sometimes because I try I like eat, to eat like, um, tonight. yeah, I <laughs> sometimes I try to eat like the over easy eggs, you know, yeah. that I can tolerate because it's soft. So I can, right. you know, do that. But for that reason, I'm like, okay, what else am I going to eat? I'm not going to eat and sit here and look at the plate and dig in it and then i'm like what so the food they're gonna think the food is not good or whatever because sometimes many times the waitress is is it everything okay do you want me to change your food or something i'm like no no I <laughs> i'm like just digging food. in it i like my food it's just gonna take me six weeks to finish my food <laughs> so then i take it home and then put it in the fridge and the kids eat it so i'm like okay and you're just like, oh, my God. Yeah, no, I, totally I, I already, that. like, I learn how to deal with myself and what I can and cannot eat. So I only eat cheese. I like cheese. I love cheese. <laughs> Sometimes I eat cottage cheese, but it's got too much salt, so I cannot eat too much salt. <laughs> So then I drink water. Then I eat soup. And sometimes I eat mashed potatoes or rice. <laughs> That's my food. <laughs> The very basics of food. Basically, That's you're it. on a soft food diet. 
I'm barely, I'm eating only to survive because I am sometimes hungry. And I sometimes I have a taste because I do like certain things, like when I cook and everything else. Because I cook meals, I cook dinners right. for everybody else. But I know I cannot eat that, but I can eat this. <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, I wish I can have this. So most of the time, like when I do want to have and try something that I would eat, I cook it in a crock pot so it makes it soft, like shredding. Right. So I do that. And then, but even if I do eat it like chicken or other stuff, like, you know, that I cook it in a crock pot, it's soft to eat, but still it takes these two days to digest it. Did they say that there's any way they could fix your stomach? No, they said that one of the gastropod, you know, largest, uh, he told me that he gave me actually medicine that it would help kind of like stimulate the muscle you know that yeah. it would help to digest but again it uh affect of other issue that it can damage my liner of my stomach so i can get ulcers in it uh, no thank you i'll live there like the way i am exercise that can get it so your stomach works better no they because they said that it's not necessarily like like you know like like I don't know, but they said that they explained like, you know, when you have a stomach, so it's like a bowl. Yeah. So when you eat, then there is bumps on it. Like, you know, then they supposed to like crunch things like, you know, so then it goes to your intestine and everything else. So there is, let's say they explain, like, let's say there is maybe 500 of these little bumps that they supposed to stimulate to, to do that. Out of that 500, maybe five works for me. So now, do you think so the, it's a uh, effect of your brain tumor? Well, I think that it is a lot with my thyroid cancer because, again, I didn't know I had a thyroid cancer till I went to the doctor because and it was July and it was boiling hot, 100 degrees outside, and I felt like I had a cold because I couldn't talk. Right. So Is I that went when you were swiffering dad. Yeah, like that. <laughs> so yeah, so I went to the doctor and I said, Well, I'm not sure exactly. I know I'm not sick, but I can talk. Like when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I'm choking, like somebody's choking me. And I have my like uh, my voice is like a horse like voice, you know, that I barely can get it out and everything else so sometimes even like i would lose my voice that i can't talk at all yeah so then the doctor's like okay have you been tested for this or this or that i don't know i i don't like to go to the doctor so i'm not sure i told him like that so i said do whatever you have to do so then he's like okay we're gonna draw blood work and we're gonna check that way and then we're gonna go further with it so when he did the test on the blood work the levels of a thyroid were outrageous right so he's like okay here's the next step we're gonna go and do the ultrasound of your thyroid and then we will see what happens next so they did that and then he automatically as soon as he's seen the ultrasound he scheduled biopsy so when the biopsy came back he called me he's like well i need to see you in the office right away i'm like well my appointment is not so a month ago no, no, you have to come. If you're able to come today or very early tomorrow morning, that would be great. I'm like, okay. So I got in a car, drove to my doctor's office, and he's like, well, you know, I got the biopsy results, and I'm not sure exactly how to even tell you that, but I have to tell you that because there is no any other way or nicer way to say it, but you have a thyroid cancer. And it's already close to being in a stage four, which would start spreading to your body. Right. So the situation is that I will give you a couple surgeons and I would recommend this one because I do work like we work together with that one and everything else. And everyone is very satisfied and happy with it. But it's your preference. You can look it up. You can research it and you can call them and do that. So I found out in May that I had a thyroid cancer. On July 3rd, I had my thyroid surgery. And they had to take both of them out because that was that much. Oh, damn. I don't have nothing. 
my brother don't have nothing either. He uh, he was 16, I want to say. My I niece remember, was 19 years old. I remember I was still young and he was still living with my mom. It was in Bram, so you might have been 15, maybe 16. Yeah. And he dropped out of school at 16, so it could have been. Uh, yeah. He woke up with lumps all across his throat. Yeah, see, like, they said that one side was really, really, like, big because it was already, like, he said, stage three getting closer. Right. So the one side was because I always had it, like, right here. It was, like, like choking me because it was oversized and everything else. The other side was a little bit smaller, but, but it was getting there. But they said to be able to prevent it, they had to take both of them out. Right. So... Um... I actually have enlarged thyroids. Yeah, do you take any medicine for it? Because sometimes Fuck they no. can give, sometimes they can give you the uh, level Look, thyroxine. If, if they gave me a fucking medication, I'd throw it back at them. The only yeah. thing I take, I'll show you. The only thing I take is ibuprofen 800. Okay. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm and saying. And, <laughs> and that's how I, that's how my life went with all these very bad issues of health because that was very major, that both of the surgeries major. I just can't believe that, like, well, I mean, I kind of can because you don't like doctors. Don't mind me. No, I don't have time. No, I don't have time for doctors. I had to take care of the kids. I had to make sure that they went everywhere, everything for their school, everything. I was there driving them here, there, this and that. So there was no time for it. Been streaming or recording for an hour and 47 minutes. Oh, my goodness. That was quite a time. It flew by. Yeah. Well, I'll end up breaking it into two different sections. So if, okay, yeah, no, that would be better. So, do you have any final words for these lovely people? Well, I hope that everyone is not very judgmental and actually try to be very reasonable and helpful and understanding. And every time to wake up in the morning to say if i do one good deed that's going to make somebody else's life better so i wish everyone would kind of live that way because that's the best way to kind of make yourself feel better and maybe somebody else's day better so i hope everyone stays safe and good and healthy exactly and one smile a day could change that's it world yes all right, everybody. We hope you have an amazing time. We love you all. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.